Hey friends, welcome to Photoshop Icebreakers. I'm Brendan Williams, and in this lesson, you're gonna learn how to use a generative fill to flawlessly remove people or other distractions from your photos with ease. In this image here, let's say that we have submitted this photo to a client. They love the image, but they want it to be focused on the middle subject. Unfortunately, we did not capture a photo with a similar composition that only had the middle subject in the frame. So we need to figure out a way to remove the outer two subjects Subjects from the photo to make this image perfect for our client. Luckily, that's super easy to do using generative fill. To begin, we need to select the lasso tool to define the area that we want generative fill to do its work. To access the lasso tool, we'll press L on our keyboard, or you can find it up here in the toolbar. While the lasso tool is selected, we'll go to the options bar and set the feather to around 10 pixels so that generative fill will have a nice soft transition around the areas that we define for our object removal adjustment. We'll then make sure that anti-alias is enabled, and I'll begin by first selecting this subject on the right. Clicking just outside of the edge of my subject, I'm going to click and drag around this subject with plenty of room to spare so that generative fill has the easiest time to replace this selected area. Letting go, this will create an active selection. And now to remove our subject using generative fill, we can just go to the contextual taskbar and click on generative fill. We'll leave the prompt option empty and then we'll click on generate. Photoshop will now look for things just outside of our selection as inspiration to fill the contents of our selection with and therefore remove our subject. It will also create a brand new generative fill layer, which is where our adjustment is taking place. And within the properties panel, we have three different variations that we can choose from to find an option that works best for this photo. If you aren't happy with any three of the variations that you have been given, you can regenerate three new variations within the properties panel simply by clicking on generate. This will regenerate three new variations based on the original lasso selection that we created. After it has finished loading, you'll see that we now have three new variations that we can click between to find something that works better in this image. I'll choose this variation for this example. If we zoom into the photo, you might notice that there are some weird things happening, such as this hovering light up in the background. However, these are things that we can easily touch up using the remove tool, as we'll discuss later in this lesson. For now, we're going to go ahead and remove the next subject from our photo using the same methods as before. Before we do that though, it's a good idea to rename your layers so that everything is clear as you work through your project. I'll rename this layer to right subject removal. Now before we create our second selection around the next subject, I'll click on my image layer in the layers panel. Once again with the lasso tool selected and the same settings as before, I'll click and drag around the outer edge of the subject with plenty of room to spare once again so that generative fill can do a nice job at filling in the selection area. With our selection active, we'll go down to the contextual taskbar and click on generative fill. Once again, leave that prompt empty and we'll click on generate. This will create a brand new generative fill layer. And once again, within the properties panel, we have three variations that we can click between to find something that works best in our photo. Just like before, if you're not happy with any three of the variations, you can click on generate to regenerate three new options that better fit your particular image. Once that is finished loading, you'll have three new variations once again and we can click between them to find one that works best in our photo. Now, once again, just like before, I'll rename this layer to stay organized, this time to left subject removal. Now that the majority of our work is complete, the final thing left to do is identify any weird areas that need further touch-ups in the object removal adjustment. In this particular example, we can see there are some weird patterns going on within the foreground bricks, as well as there's a hovering light in the background that we need to remove. To remove these foreground bricks, I'll click on my topmost layer. And once again, with the lasso tool selected, same settings as before, I'll click and drag to select around the area that I want to refine using generative fill. While my selection is active, I'll click on generative fill inside of the contextual taskbar and generate once again, just like before. This will create a third generative fill layer above our previous two adjustments. And we have three variations that we can choose from to replace that brick within the foreground. I'm much happier with this third variation and turning that on and off. You can see how much better that looks already. 
Now we just need to go and deal with this final area in the back. And for smaller areas like this, we can use the Remove tool. To do this non-destructively, we'll click on our topmost layer in the Layers panel, then go and create a new layer. I'll rename this layer to Remove Tool. With our Remove Tool layer highlighted, we'll select our Remove Tool by pressing J on our keyboard, or you can find it nested within the Healing Brushes or the Patch Tool. You'll find the Remove Tool right here. Up in the Options bar, we'll make sure that Sample All Layers is enabled, as well as Remove after each brush stroke. Now we can scale down the brush using the bracket keys and just paint around the object that we want to remove. Photoshop will automatically remove that for us and that adjustment will apply on that Remove Tool layer. We can repeat this process around any other areas of the photo that we are not happy with that we want to touch up. In this case, I'm happy with the final result, so we're ready to look at the before and after. Looking at our before and now our after, you can see how much work has been done with relative ease using generative fill and the remove tool to further refine our adjustments. This technique is one of the most efficient ways to remove distractions from your photos, especially when they take up large areas of your frame as they did in this example here. Thank you so much for joining me here for this Photoshop Icebreakers tutorial. And if you learned something today, make sure to let us know by hitting the like button below. And while you're there, make sure to subscribe for more Photoshop tutorials.